My name is John Carmichael, and I work at Keck Medical Center at, in US, at USC in Los Angeles, California. And I'm the co-director of the USC Pituitary Center and co-chief for the Division of Endocrinology there. And I've done work in growth hormones since my fellowship, actually. I did my fellowship at NYU, and one of my first projects was looking at growth hormone in healthy elderly. And over the years, I've been involved in several clinical trials involving growth hormone replacement therapy and also investigation of growth hormone testing and IGF-1 testing uh, in uh, both patients with pituitary disease and healthy adults. Well, there are several barriers to getting uh, patients treated with growth hormone, and a lot of those come down to how the medication is delivered or insurance approvals or things like that. But there's also a common perception that I think over the past few decades has been slowly um, eroding, and that is that growth hormone is not necessary in patients with adult, you know, adult growth hormone deficiency. And as we've seen with many clinical trials starting back in the 1990s and through the early 2000s, that patients with growth hormone deficiency do benefit from growth hormone replacement, especially when we think about things like quality of life measures, in addition to things like body composition and cardiovascular outcomes. But overcoming the perception that it's not necessary once people have gotten to reach a certain height after a pediatric uh, diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency, that was a lot to overcome. Uh, there's also been a, a you know, good uh, advancement in sort of delivery of care and being able to diagnose people, target um, you know, uh, groups of uh, patients that I think are high yield in terms of their benefit from growth hormone. So patients who've gone through pituitary surgery or pituitary radiation for their pituitary disease, I think are great candidates for growth hormone therapy, you know, as long as the testing and the, and the diagnosis is made accurately. So these are two large databases that are real-world data, and so uh, Novo Nordisk has collected data from people who are initiated on growth hormone, so the naive patients who are first getting growth hormone, in addition to those patients who have been treated with growth hormone previously and then enrolled in these, um, in these registries. And so we're collecting data on patients who are treated with growth hormone and looking at various outcomes and various measures um, uh, of those patients. It might be things like hemoglobin A1C or BMI. Uh, we might also look at things related to dosage and IGF-1 response. Our presentation focused on uh, an age group of people that had not been explored with, um, with a data analysis um, uh, to date, and that uh, is patients who are uh, ages less than 60. Now, there was a, um, a study looking at patients who were over age 60 with the Nordinet and in answer registries, but this focused on younger patients and really looked at that analysis of different uh, adverse events, serious adverse events and adverse reactions in these groups of people. We divided the, the, group, the cohort into three age groups, um, younger and then um, those patients in their 30s and then those patients in their 40s to, to 60 and looked at serious adverse reactions and adverse events in those, in those patients. We also looked at how many of those patients reached their normal IGF-1. And what we found was that among those three groups, there was not a, a difference in serious adverse reactions or adverse events um, between groups one, two, and three in the different age groups. And, um, and that in each age group, uh, they reached, about 80% of them reached a normal IGF-1 during the course of our follow-up. We had a total of about 10 years of, of follow-up, but a lot of our analysis of the cohort uh, came down to, to looking at patients who were uh, analyzed at year zero and then year two to have the, the, most, the collection of the most robust cohort um, after initiation of growth hormone. Well, the take-home message is that uh, growth hormone is a safe medication um, among these uh, age groups and that the majority of patients see an impact on their IGF-1 levels by taking a growth hormone. 
it's not surprising and, and that's what's nice about the study is that we're not seeing any kind of signal of any adverse events, we're not seeing adverse reactions and we're safely getting these patients to uh, target IGF-1 uh, treating them well with growth hormone. Well, I, I think that uh, registries like this are important because not only do they spread the word that growth hormone is still a very important part of treatment of hypopituitarism, but also it's, I think, important to reinforce the safety and the effectiveness of growth hormone, especially as we go forward and look for uh, newer and, and better ways of treating patients um, with hypopituitarism.